Human Services Day? No, we did not have that. Public Safety Committee? No? Nothing to report? All right. Public Works Committee? No. Nope. You meet next week? Yes. All right. Technology Committee? Good timing, huh? Technology committee met tonight. Not that everyone wants to hear me, but technology committee met tonight. We talked about the agreement, the pending agreement interlocal with Auburn. Uh, they came back with some questions to some of our or answers to some of our questions we submitted last time. I think we have a pretty good document. Uh, we'll be bringing it to council at the next workshop. So they should take it to their uh, committees and whatnot, but we wanted to get approval on our end before they started moving forward. Um, we also reviewed, um, I submitted questions to um, Chief Calkins and Stephanie regarding the evidence software. Uh, they attended our meeting as well um, and provided the answers and the committee recommends approval of the evidence software. Excellent, good job. Any comments from council? Civil Service Commission, um, FYI, the Civil Service Commission will be meeting this Wednesday at 6 o'clock here in Council Chambers. Um, Park Board. Nobody from Park Board? All right. Planning Commission. I know Paula's on vacation this week, so. Okay. Pierce County Regional Council. All right. Sound Cities Association, um, they met a couple weeks ago. I did not attend that meeting. I was. Um, in DC, but I did attend last week. They had a networking dinner for Sound Cities Association, which was attended by all, and Dow Constantine was the guest speaker. He did give a shout out to the city of Pacific, <coughs> congratulating us on remaining a city. So, <laughs> anyway, but, um, and I also attended the skateboard meeting where there, were, uh, there was a presentation from WashDOT regarding oil tankers running through the Valley Cities. There's a lot of concern about that, and they talked about how Burlington Northern had bought 5,000 heavy wall tankers to run on their lines, the least amount to these oil companies for running these crude oils out to the port. Um, so you're going to probably hear a lot more conversation on this because these trains are going to really start increasing and running through our cities. Um, with the new refineries that are opening up. So there's going to be a lot of conversation on that. They also did um, five presentations for recommendations for transportation projects that are going to be referred to the Puget Sound Regional Council. Mayor Hill and I tried to get some, some support on West Valley, trying to get West Valley repaired. But out of seven projects, we scored seven, so we didn't get referred forward. <laughs> but we did get... Um, recommendations which I passed on to the public works and our engineers to uh, as far as some funding mechanisms to help go along and work on West Valley as a group project so we'll be moving forward with that. Um, Valley Regional Fire Authority. Um, last week, it was two weeks ago, um, and just a, a, a bit of being paid all All right, with that, yeah. we will like move on. Pardon me? Yeah. Council Member Brown. I'm sorry. Um, council Member have comments? Anything they want to report? Council Members have comments or anything they want to report? Council Member Jones. Just something quick, you, you brought up the issue about the oil tankers and it was yes. brought up by a citizen. We asked John that evening about uh, whether our, our emergency plan has ended to deal with those issues. I found a very interesting story on the uh, TV the other day talking about those specific tankers and the reason why they're bald. <coughs> the reason, more reasons why they're bald than anything is because <coughs> they're not filtering off the, uh, the gas that, um, that go along with the oil. It increases their weight load so they get more money for their oil, but it also becomes highly volatile if they bled off that and truly just shift the oil would be a lot more uh, safe issue. But so something might we want to talk with the RFA to make sure we have a plan in case worst case scenario something happens. But when the mayor mentioned uh, when you were talking about this, 
after our citizen spoke about his concerns, I called, uh, I got hold of Dominic Marzano as the Zone 3 Fire Chief's hazmat guru, kind of, I guess. And we are having a meeting on April 3rd with the Zone 3 Fire and any emergency people that want to attend, so I'm going to, and it's strictly based on your, the subject you just discussed, the transportation with the trains and so after that meeting I'll have much more information to bring back and, and I know that on the agenda is how are we going to deal with the issues so well, great. appreciate it is it, is it, is it yeah. exclusively on the tracks that run on East Street and Skinner Road or will, it, will they run on the tracks that go Burlington Northern is the further track okay. the closer tracks here are you across the street on my house okay. Okay. Any other questions? Just one other comment on that uh, Burlington Northern uh, Emergency Response Plan summary <coughs> for uh, uh, oil transportation is available online, uh, and there is nothing planned <coughs> between the south end of the Duwamish and Tacoma. None of this has any oil exposure, so they don't have any plans to stop it from going, say, into the river if there was an accident on the bridge. Just Total gap in their plan, nothing identified along anywhere in there at the moment. One thing I would just say is that, you know, plan or no plan, as a fire authority response, we we look at the DOT guide. If we get an identification placard on the, the tankers that are spilling, we get we look at the DOT guide, we get our um, you know evacuation distances, we create a, a hot zone, a warm zone, and a, a cold zone, and the, uh, when we lay it out, it's based on what the chemical is, uh, what's off-gassing, what the wind direction is, and then so the, the one thing that we need to address in the city, possibly, is making sure that we have things like sand or something to, to create dikes and, and ponds or pools for you know, for crude oil doesn't have necessarily uh, a huge uh, health hazard as far as, you know, as long as you're not standing in it, you're probably fairly safe. Uh, but, you know, we can probably dike it and try to keep it out of the river, dig ponds, use our equipment to dig holes, dig ponds, and then deal with the environmental catastrophe after we've stopped the leak. And so that's something that we can start addressing at a <coughs> level. If, if we're that concerned about it, um, and I'm sure Auburn's, you know, between Auburn, Algona, Sumner, and uh, Bonnie Lake, we probably can get a lot of sand trucks here mm -hmm. in a hurry to, to dump some sand and, and keep it out of the river. We might not keep it all out of the river, but we can, we can at least limit the, the environmental impact. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you. And then moving on the agenda, we have a public hearing this evening. Um, so seeking public input regarding the City of Pacific proposed 2014-2019 total facilities and updates. We will now open that up. You are up, sir. Did this presentation a few weeks ago, and I'll repeat it just to sort of refresh everyone's memory. Capital facilities and the infrastructure are requirements that the city looks at in the long term five to 20 years out to make sure that we have budgets in place to meet the, the projected needs in both current and in the future for our various infrastructure elements that, that includes the transportation, pump of water, sanitary, sewers, drainage, but it also includes public safety elements as well as some of the other amenities for that the city needs such as parks and recreation. So the police, the elements of public safety that we're concerned about in this long-term capital improvement is making sure that the police station and grounds are <coughs> ready for the future needs so that as we pro project and move it as chief understands new things coming into play that are going to be needed, we may have to make modifications to the police station or maybe modify security at the grounds, these types of things as well as 
um, additional police cars over time. <coughs> Transportation elements include the 22 plus lane miles that we operate and maintain of arterial collectors as well as the local streets. Our potable water system contains three wells over 30 miles of distribution piping of a three quarter million gallon reservoir, 3,500 gallon per minute pump station, 1,600 plus service connections, as well as 250 plus fire hydrants. Now the reservoir has been in place for not quite 10 years. The WWA guidelines suggest that you have that reservoir inspected every five to six years. That's one of the things on the agenda this year is we will either send a diver or a remote device in there to do a thorough inspection of the tank to make sure that it is still in proper working order so that we can make arrangements if we have to do something sooner as opposed to later when it becomes an absolute emergency. Sanitary sewer system consists of four pump stations, 20 plus miles of gravity collection, over a mile of force mains, and more than 1,400 sewer connections. We have some roadway projects down at the south end going to the begin this year, both Stewart Road and Valentine Avenue. As in conjunction with those two projects, we're looking at repairing some of the laterals that go from the main out to the side sewer because we've inspected those and we found that there's some leakage coming in on some of those. Some of those have never been used and yet we still have a lot of rainwater coming in. So what we want to do is solve those problems so we don't have excessive groundwater coming in that we have to pump and treat instead of allowing it to stay in the groundwater system. The uh, Coma Boulevard, <coughs> Coma Boulevard the Fifth Avenue pump station is also in need of some electrical upgrades. The pole that has this power source that's fallen away, and we've been looking at this for a couple of years, that will happen. <coughs> On the drainage side, we've got 16 storm ponds throughout the city that the city is responsible for maintaining. 20 plus miles of drain pipes, 800 plus catch basins. In addition to that, we've got some ditches that we have to maintain, other elements, street sweeping, and sort of it's both an element of street maintenance, but it's also an element of our storm drain system. We've had noticed a lot of um, flooding issues that have occurred this year that we intend to make some repairs that we've got a list of about six items that we are proposing to do with our own crews this summer. One of them, the Elise Pond, is sloughing off at the westerly end. So we're going to, a couple of years ago we had a retaining wall built on a portion of that pond. Now more of the pond is sloughing off, so the crew is going to extend that wall so we can resolve that issue so the adjacent <coughs> neighbor does not experience any more of the problems with their fence constantly falling down soils eroding. We, a couple weeks ago, we had some concerns from one of the property owners up on West Hill on 51st. We are looking at doing some rerouting of the storm drain so it's no longer going through people's properties, but we are taking it around to the right of way. On Butte Avenue, if you drove down there a few weeks ago, you would have seen a lot of flooding on the west side. So we're looking at ways we can extend, put some catch basins in to collect some of that water that was just standing there and redirect it south into the rest of the collection system. There are a couple of other small drainage projects similar to that throughout the city that we want to accomplish this year. <coughs> we have 12 parks, over 20 acres of ground, two plus miles of trails that have to maintain. I'm not aware of what the <coughs> Park projects are scheduled for this year, but I'm sure there are a couple. <coughs> and then we also have the Civic Center Complex. We've got over 7,000 square feet of offices, meeting rooms, etc. We've got the Senior Center, the Gymnasium, the East Room, and Associated Grounds that require time and materials to repair and re uh, maintain. We have requested a grant to, for some repairs on City Hall this year. We have not heard back on that yet. In addition to that, we are looking at possibly submitting a community development block grant for some funding to do a master plan of this whole complex <coughs> so that we can move forward 
not have to go back and remove something that has already been done. We've got several public works pieces of equipment. They all have to be operated and maintained so that they are available <coughs> for us when we need to do them, use them. For example, we've got dump trucks in, that are used also as snow plows. The last thing we want to do is enter, have a snow and probably won't have one this year anymore this season, but we could easily have them in the fall as we approach winter at the end of the year. So we have to make sure those vehicles are ready to go so that we're not caught in a bad place. Part of our, we have our vector truck, which helps us clean up catch basins. We have our street sweeper, which is also part of our storm maintenance, which we have requirements there. We've got a new piece of equipment we come in pretty soon that we'll be using later on this summer for some of the storm water projects that I discussed. So here's our identified public safety CIP for now, next five to uh, about 15 years out. As I said before, when I made this presentation last time, we're going to sit down later on this year and dust all this off. This, a lot of these projects have rolled forward. If they haven't been done, they just roll forward to the next year. And then we try and adjust and make sure that we're distributing some of the costs out evenly so that we're not trying to take too, too large a chunk of money in any one given year. So it fits into the budget a little bit easier. But we're going to sit down and reevaluate all the projects we have and determine if there's some new ones that are on board that we need to add and reevaluate costs as well. We have transportation elements. Our big transportation projects this year are Valentine Avenue, Stewart Road, and we're doing an overlay on 3rd Avenue. We just received the final cost estimate from King County this last week, and it's pretty close to what we had budgeted coming from TIB, so it looks like we're on board there. <coughs> walk the project with people from King County to figure out if we need to make some adjustments to make sure we could keep it in budget to <coughs> close to what we needed. <coughs> Potable water. Um, we're looking at, as I said, the reservoir clean evaluation project. We have Val Valentine and Stewart Road water main replacement project. That will be split over the next two years. Um, so the, there's those projects. We may try and squeeze in a couple more. It depends on where we get at with everything else. Sanitary sewer, I talked about the <coughs> pump station. You can see that it's kicked out a year from some other elements, but the electrical work actually is scheduled for this year. We also are still evaluating the West Hill connection. <coughs> Storm drain to talk about the various projects we have lined up. Uh, 51st, Butte Avenue, we have one on 4th Avenue. That's just running a, a line across the street from the existing catch basin from the south. The south side has a run that goes all the way to the Lawrence Ditch. We want to put catch basin on the north side at that particular location because there's a lot of localized flooding that we have this year blocking someone's driveway. Chicago Boulevard, we have some similar issues on the easterly side of Chicago between 5th and 4th. We've had some complaints about, so we thought we had some pipe in there, we don't, so we're going to have to figure out which is the best direction, whether we take it north to 4th or south. 5th <coughs> right now is looking like it's much shorter to take it north to 4th. We just find out what other utilities we have in that area. And then the leaf lane pond to previously discussed. Parks and Recreation have some wetland mitigation that we are looking at on the uh, trail. There's still, we're looking for funding for the Morgan property. If there's funds in there, we've got the Stewart Road Trail later on this year. And then we're still looking for money for the rest of the inner urban trail. So we want to see if we can move some of those projects forward. Civic Center Complex, as I discussed earlier, we talked about, we've submitted an application directly to a couple of our legislatures to representatives to see if we can get some funding for <coughs> improvements to City Hall and master planning of the site. And then we're also looking at the CDGB application. And that includes <laughs> Capital Improvement. <laughs> So 
any questions or comments from the audience? I have my exhibit here. I don't see any uh, volcano evacuation route, route signs in town. Anybody know where any of these are in Pacific? Okay. Um, you know, it's very unfortunate up in Snohomish County that there was a landslide that went through a housing development and several people are lost. It's just a terrible tragedy. Uh, building on a river, on a slope that has known hazards or in an area that other people know that land is sliding. Um, we think about these immediate landslides that come with heavy rains, but Mount Rainier is sitting up there and it's still pretty active. Um, the uh, possibility of a lahar coming down the mountain, uh, for those of us who live on the White River, we have to think of the possibility of uh, Mud Mountain Dam and the lake behind Mud Mountain Dam being overwhelmed. The last major lahar off the White River um, it might have been 6,000 years ago, but it filled in the canyon of the White River near Crystal Mountain, 250 feet, and the mud coming over the top of Mud Mountain was a couple of hundred feet thick, and we're actually sitting on that lahar material. The next one might not be so big, but it still could impact us. The lahars that came down um, the Puyallup River through Electron because the one of them was only 300 years ago. That mud reached commencement bay. Some of it reached here. Mud from Lahars has reached Elliott Bay and commencement bay. So I'd like to see some capital facilities monies going to help King County get those roads up the hill fixed uh, or a foot trail going up by the water tower to get 25, 30 feet in elevation. Um, it's it's probably not going to happen in our lifetime, but it could. And for us to not even have some signs that direct people which way to go um, is seems like that's a uh, short-sightedness. So um, some signs, some money towards Pierce County. We're talking to Pierce County and Edgewood about Jovita Boulevard. <coughs> I know you can't widen it but I don't know what the interaction, the plan is with them to uh, have a foot trail or something along Jovita Boulevard so when the traffic's all clogged up, at least those people who are physically able can walk on the sidewalk or walk on a path along the road and uh, connecting and completing the interurban trails through town and also another uh, related to that is connecting the cul-de-sacs that are back-to-back -back <coughs> with trails and paths so people don't have to go out and around on a car. They can cut through a cul-de-sac from, from one neighborhood to another, like there's a, a trail between, um, I believe it's Fifth and Blueberry Court uh, near Pacific <coughs> Meadows. So <coughs> putting some money into the capital facilities plan for master planning for these emergencies would be really helpful in my mind. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Second call from comments from the audience. Okay. Final call from comments from the audience. Hearing none, public hearing is closed.